So next up, very basic surround setup here. And I want to show you how to route stuff through a submaster. Now this is exactly the same thing that you're going to do if you add your appropriate group tracks that will let you export and control stems. So ideally you want to do this for dialogue and effects and music or maybe even some more. But I'm just going to show you one submaster and this is valuable. And even if you add more stems and groups, I would still have the submaster. So everything's going to go to their groups and then to this 5.1 submaster and this submaster goes out. And one of the main reasons for that is in terms of loudness measurement and processing and setting stuff on the submaster. Um, and but I'm going to show this to you in the context of setting up fold down, stereo fold down. So that's the two things I want to show you in this video: setting up the kind of submaster and doing a stereo fold down setup. So let's create a new track. I'm going to move it second in line here and call it the submaster. Let's say 5.1 so it's clear and I really like this automatic random track color thing um, and then as before we have this set to a width of 6 and this guy obviously goes to the master send so you've got that enabled here but now everything else will go to the submaster instead but let's th first set it up properly so now we have to route all of our tracks to the submaster first. I'm starting with the 5.1 track here. And when I open the routing, I have to untick master send. That's important. Otherwise, it's going to send both to the master and to the submaster, and stuff's going to get duplicated. But instead, I'm using a send. So this is the submaster. And remember here, choose a multi channel source because you want to send all of those 5.1 channels over there. And the same thing for stereo. Um, we are going to remove the master send and then add the send to the submaster and set it to six channels. Now it's sending to the submaster. It should still sound the same as before. It's it does on my side. Um, and the stereo, let's just test. Still plays. And now what this allows you to do is do things over here. So now you can use the submaster things. Um, before I show you the stereo fold down, Reaper now has built in loudness metering that works quite well. Uh, and I'm going to add that to my master track here. The loudness meter yeah you can use other free ones like you lean but the principle applies you're going to put that as the last thing on your insert chain on your output track because you want to measure the integrated loudness of the entire mix and everything as it will be exported now previously if you just put this meter on the master track and then have to do a tiny tweak like the whole mix slightly softer if you do that on the master track it doesn't reflect in the meter because the, the inserts on the master track in Reaper doesn't have the option to be pre or post fade or um, effect. So you can do that. But now if you add it to the master track and change the sub master, you can affect that. So have a look here. I'm going I'm to play a little bit of this track and show you all the loudness values. And you can see channel one and two true peak values up there and then you've got your momentary your short term your loudness range and then also integrated value nice little histogram that appears over there and you'll see we're sitting at minus 24.8 loudness units over here now have a look when i keep playing again it's going to reset the meter so you don't have to do that like on other plugins but also if i bring down the level of the master fader it's going to keep on metering here But if I bring down the level of the submaster. So this is an effect, a kind of a, a pre-post faint workaround for something like this. Now, word of caution, if your mix is sitting very much out of range of the loudness spec you're trying to hit, don't just fix it with a submaster. So if you six loudness units above or below, technically you can do that, but you might affect the co composition of your mix. So fix it on the track level or on the stem level first. But if you're very close, then a tweak like this will be quite useful. Also remember, if your mix is slightly too loud and you 
tweak it down a little bit, that's fine. But if you're making it slightly louder, you do have the option to um, to make that clip at the end. I'm not sure if Reaper has a true peak limiter and the loudness meter gives you true peak values. It does have limiters, play around with that. That's something that you might need to do if you're bringing up the mix like that all together. Um, but that enables that now. And there are other processing that this might also apply with this kind of routing layout. But the real thing that I want to show you in this video is that stereo fold down. Uh, a very good thing to always check when you do 5.1 mixes is how do they sound like automatically in stereo and um, there is not a quick preset way to do this with a monitoring control room in Reaper like in other DAWs but as with most things in Reaper you can do it in some kind of workaround way and that is one of the reasons I created the Submaster track. So I'm going to go to the inserts here and I'm going to go and add a um, plugin called 8 times mono to one stereo. Don't do the stereo one. This takes 8 mono inputs and outputs them as a stereo track, which is what we want to do here. Now, by the way, there's 8 tracks here, so if you set this up in 7.1, you can also use this one for 7.1 fold downs. We're in 5.1, so I'm just going to um, put channels 7 and 8 on, on minus 20 here and you'll see the top 8 bits here that's for level and the bottom 8 that's for pan and they kind of go left right or like that so it's mostly right but your typical fold down and obviously you can come tweak it here for different fold downs but the most standard one would be left and right comes through as normal center which is channel 3 would come through minus 3 decibels slightly attenuated and look the third fade here needs to be in the middle. Easiest way to do that is to enter 0.5. This is a range from 0 to 1. And then your LFE is the next one that I'm also putting in the middle. But you have two options here. Either just cut it out. That's very common that it would just be cut out. Or you can put it softer. Um, I'm say going to put it on minus 10 there. Um, remember your mix needs to work without that channel. It often gets discarded. So play around with either attenuating it tinily or just making it a lot softer here. And then your two surround channels, they are attenuated by six decibels each and they already panned left and right respectively. Okay, so that's the first step. You have this in this track um, and our other tracks are routing to the submaster. But now you have to do another thing to your master track. I'm opening the routing again and you need to have an alternative output path. So you already have the one of six channels out and now I'm going to add another one which has two channels out over here. Remember, don't keep them both active at the same time because there'll be duplication. So either have the surround one or the stereo one active. When you have this plugin active, you want the stereo one active and I'm going to play you the Blitzstone to show you how that folds down into stereo. And there you have it, all the channels folded down to the front, left and right. So not only do you have to enable this plugin and enable the correct output for listening, but when you render this file, let me show you. I haven't made a selection yet. I've made now a time selection around the blitz tone. I am choosing my time selection here and I am rendering this. Now it defaults to stereo, which is fine for this, and you'll see what the picture looks like. Let's render this file. That is what a correctly rendered stereo fold down of the Blitzstone looks like. That is correct. I like the new loudness values that Reaper gives you when exporting files here. Uh, and remember, when you want to go back to 5.1 listening and importantly 5.1 exporting, you absolutely have to bypass this plugin. Don't have to remove it, just leave it there for later listening and exporting. And then on your master track, you definitely have to go back to the six channel output and do remember when you render stuff that you choose six channels over here otherwise it's going to be a stereo file i'm not actually sure how it behaves let's see how it behaves um, let's just overwrite it you'll see it's just taken the stereo part of the 5.1 mix it's a left only right only um, it doesn't have any of the other information so that's not correct so if i then change this to a six point 
six file. Uh, it's not correct because we weren't trying to do that, but that's not a way to do a stereo fold down. You have to have that other stuff enabled. Six channel export. Let's overwrite that file again. And you'll see there we have the picture of what our Blitzstone usually looks like. It, it has exported properly. So there you have it. Stereo fold down in Reaper. Pretty slick when you do it like this. Remember to bypass, remember to have the right um, output connected. And also be aware that your metering in Reaper is not as clear as it is in some other DAWs. When you work like this, it doesn't show you a very clear view of now I'm 6.5.1 and now I'm in stereo. Um, but it does sound and export properly. So that's the most important part of this. Next video is going to be about setting up a dedicated LFE track.